What's going on you guys back here today and today we're talking about the first video in my new DaVinci Resolve series. This video is going to focus on the topic of how CPU clock speed or frequency affects your export times in DaVinci Resolve. So a couple things to note, we're going to use my desktop system that I have back here. It's got an AMD Threadripper 1950X CPU, 16 cores, 32 threads, 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM at 3200 megahertz, two GTX 1080 Ti's running at stock speeds, and uh, yeah, all the footage for this video that I'm going to be using for my export is all stored on a SanDisk SSD Extreme 500 USB 3 interface. I didn't notice any difference between using that for my scratch disk or a SATA SSD, so all that's going to be fine. And the DaVinci Resolve version we are using is 15.0.1, which is the most current version as of today, September 2nd. Um, what I'm going to do is use my top five water cooling tips video, which was shot entirely on my Canon M50, 120 megabit 4K footage at 24 frames per second. And it is going to be using the following export settings. So in the deliver tab, you click YouTube 2160p from the drop down menu, name the file, processor speed, export, so 3.4 export, so on and so forth. And um, then up the bit rate to 45 megabits per second. Uh, there are LUTs applied to this footage. There are um, color grades applied to this footage and some stabilization applied to some of these shots. So we should get a good mix of how this is going to actually perform in a real world export for a video. The first speed I went with for this test was the base processor speed of the AMD 1950X Threadripper CPU, and that is 3.4 gigahertz. It was locked down in the BIOS. There is no overclocking enhancement and no core performance boost enabled, so we shouldn't see any weird oddities because of those two things. And the total video length was four minutes and 16 seconds. The export time came out to three minutes and 17 seconds at that speed. There was no noticeable difference from how I normally run this machine to the reduced clock speed in timeline scrubbing or anything like that. So there's no real point to talk about it in this video on any of the other tests. The next frequency I tested was 3.6 gigahertz. And that saw a export time of two minutes and 59 seconds. So overall reduction of 18 seconds. And the third test that I ran had the processor locked at 3.8 gigahertz. That saw two minutes and 49 seconds. So another 10 seconds off of that. And the final processor speed that I tested was 4.0 gigahertz and that saw the export time at two minutes and 42 seconds. So another seven seconds off of that. So that being said, all these increases in CPU speed did net a reduction in uh, export times as a whole from each jump. But if you look at these things as percentages compared to the previous result, you'll notice that there is the actual law of diminishing returns coming into effect here. So the first jump from 3.4 to 3.6 showed a 5.8% increase in CPU speed, but a 9.1% reduction in export time. So you gain a little more than what you actually put in. The second uh, export test showed a 5.6% increase in CPU speed over 3.6, and uh, the reduction was 5.6% over the two minute and 59 second export. And finally, the 4.0 gigahertz test showed a 5.3% increase and only a 4.1% reduction. So every step you take up shows a lesser and lesser reduction in time. And that's pretty much how things go in this technology driven world of the more you spend, the better it gets. But ultimately, you're not going to continue making the same jumps for the more you put into it. So. Yeah, it's a good example of the law of diminishing returns. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about about these results is this is limited to my computer with that specific video. I haven't done this test with any other videos or any other uh, base configurations for a computer, so I can't guarantee that those are gonna be the same percentages and jumps that you're going to see, 
but that's at least one test case. So if you have any information on how CPU frequency affects your DaVinci Resolve export time, why don't you leave those in the comments down below. Also, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can leave those in the comments section down below too. That would be greatly appreciated. You can like this video and subscribe to my channel to watch me grow. Also, if you could check me out on Twitter and Instagram at the Jacob Person, uh, you can see some behind the scenes stuff that you won't really see anywhere else here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see the video where I built this Threadripper machine, click over here. If you want to see uh, another video from my channel, why don't you click over here. And if you wanna subscribe, click in the middle. With that being said, you guys, I hope you all have a wonderful day.